I'm Pierre Noel. I'm an hematologist in the Division of Hematology Oncology at Mayo Scottsdale. Um, I'd like to speak today with you about systemic mastocytosis. Systemic mastocytosis is a rare disease, and it's a disease involving myeloid cells, which are part of the cells in the bone marrow. The organ which is most frequently involved in mast cell disease is the skin. Over 90% of patients with systemic mast cell disease have skin involvement. How do you know if you have mast cell disease? Well, mast cells are cells which are present in our body, in different parts of our body, both our skin, gastrointestinal tract, and bone marrow. Patients with systemic mast cell disease for the large majority, approximately 95%, have a mutation in their mast cells when we collect mast cells from the bone marrow. Over 95% of patients with systemic mast cell disease have a CKIT mutation, which is a mutation we can analyze when we do a bone marrow biopsy, and this confirms the diagnosis of systemic mastocytosis especially if it's done in conjunction with other tests. Some of the other tests is when we look at the bone marrow, we look at the number of mast cells and the presence of mast cell aggregates. We require over 15 mast, mast cells as part of an aggregate. And if we have significant number of aggregates in conjunction with the presence of a mutation, we feel more comfortable in making a diagnosis of systemic mastocytosis. Other factors which are important is there's something you can measure in the peripheral blood which is called tryptase. And tryptase is, or the level of tryptase is, correlates with the total mast cell burden in your body. So when we evaluate someone with systemic mastocytosis, we do a tryptase to try to evaluate how many mast cells are present. The other thing we look at when we look at mast cells is we look at what they look like morphologically under the microscope. And patients with systemic mastocytosis frequently have mast cells which have an unusual shape. Frequently they have a spindle shape. And we look at the proportion of mast cells who have a sp spindle shape. Other organs which can be involved in systemic mastocytosis include the gastrointestinal tract, the spleen, the liver, um, the lymph nodes, and when we evaluate patients uh, in clinic, we try to evaluate what organs are involved and the extent of involvement. We stage patients with masto my systemic mastocytosis based on their organ involvement as well as the side effects which occur from the systemic mastocytosis. Some of these side effects can include fractures of bone, can include a spleen which is enlarged and kind of captures or traps a lot of the normal blood cells. It could be involvement of the liver with increased pressure in the liver and accumulation of fluid in the abdomen or it could be involvement of the gastrointestinal tract with problems of absorption and weight loss. One other important thing in systemic mastocytosis is there's a proportion of patients who have a phenomenon called anaphylaxis. And anaphylaxis is a severe allergic reaction which can occasionally result into death. Most patients do not die but have problems breathing and problems with their blood pressure. This can occur following bee stings, snake bites, insect stings, but also very commonly it can be associated with medications. Uh, apart from medications, symptoms of anaphylaxis can occasionally occur in patients who do very strenuous exercise. Uh, so we see patients coming to us uh, because they had an episode of hypotension with respiratory compromise and their physician taught about mast cell disease and did a tryptase and they found that a tryptase was significantly increased. Or someone had a very severe reaction to an insect bite and that's a source of referral to an hematologist for evaluation for systemic mastocytosis. 
What we do in patients with systemic mastocytosis from a treatment standpoint, is there are patients who have indolent systemic mastocytosis, and these patients have an excellent prognosis. And what we try to do is to minimize their symptoms. And this minimization of symptoms can be done through the use of different forms of antihistamines uh, to block the histamine release from mast cells. Uh, the other thing we do is we give patients EpiPens, which are pens con containing epinephrine that they can use if they are unfortunate and have an anaphylactic reaction. They can react to this reaction by injecting, self-injecting, or having a family member inject the epinephrine and help resolve this episode of anaphylaxis. The other things we do with these patients is we evaluate them for osteoporosis because osteoporosis and fractures are complications which can be associated with systemic mastocytosis. There are forms of systemic mastocytosis which are more aggressive. One subtype is called aggressive mastocytosis and the other one is mast cell leukemia. These subtypes of mastocytosis need to be treated more aggressively and the standard of care for these disorders has been the use of alpha interferon as well as other chemotherapeutic drugs. There's a small proportion of patients who do not have the C-kit mutation and with, within that small subpopulation there are patients who res are responsive to a drug called imatinib and we have used this with success when a small proportion of patients. Mayo participates in investigational trials with different agents for patients who have aggressive uh, systemic mastocytosis and uh, we are involved at Mayo in providing a complete evaluation of patients and offering them both the standard of care or in patients who have failed the standard of care we uh, evaluate their eligibility for investigational treatment. Thank you very much for your attention.